Now may the blessing of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit be upon you both into your marriage through the rest of your life and with us all. Amen. With me beneath the 
It's my joy on behalf of the young couple, Chris and Emma, and their families to welcome you to this time of celebration and to bear witness and share in the joy of Chris and Emma this afternoon. They've pledged, they will pledge, their life commitment to one another. And we come together to seek God's blessing, his fullest and his richest blessing on their marriage. It is good to see so many of you and you've scrubbed up so well. <laughs> now, as a symbol of this union, and remember, it's not just the union of two people, it's the union of two families. How good is that? See what you've done. <laughs> you've, you've brought families together. Your love has done that, tremendous. We're going to enact symbolically this union uh, as Chris and Emma, together from two candles, light the candle in the middle. Two families, one life. We know it rejoices your heart when love is demonstrated in our world and we just want to bless you for the love of Chris and Emma demonstrated this morning, this afternoon here among us. May their home be blessed. May those who enter their homes be blessed. May their families be blessed through their love one for the other. And so together we commit them before you this afternoon. In Jesus name. Amen. You'll have heard these verses read, I think, a number of times. They're from the letter 
of St. Paul to the Christian church in, or the Christians in Corinth. And it's the 13th chapter. And he writes this. If I speak with in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love never fails. And then he wrote again to a church. Um, St. Paul was a prolific writer, a genius of a man. Anyway, so he writes to a church in Ephesus, modern day Turkey, of course, and he writes this to them. He says, be kind and compassionate to one another. Good, eh? Forgiving each other. Think of that. Just as in Christ, God forgave you. And so just 10 minutes of your time, eh? That's all I'm taking, honestly, I promise, right? So we're finally here. So it's taken longer than desired or anticipated, but here you are. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Is that not wonderful? Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. Emma, my pet. <laughs> I've known you and your family longer than they wish to remember. <laughs> um, and you know, it's been, it's been a joy uh, to see you um, grow in a family, a Christian family, where unconditional love, constant, unwavering support, this overwhelming sense of looking after your well-being, big things by the way, Chris, right? <laughs> <laughs> Has, become, has been the foundation for your development. And you've developed as a confident, caring, and capable person. And today, here you sit, Mrs. McManus. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely the blushing bride. And it's wonderful to see, and you are blushing, by the way, just to let you know, right? <laughs> you know, Chris, I think you've done very well. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And Chris, I haven't known you for anything as long as I've known Emma and her family. But let me say this, and, and my wife will corroborate this because right, she's the authority, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lesson to be learned right there, Chris, right? <laughs> she's the authority. Uh, and I said to her, Do you know, there is something really winsome and attractive about Chris's personality. But there is a deep, quiet, gentle strength about you, um, which is wonderful. And you know, your love for Emma just shines out of you. It does, which is wonderful. Like, like smile on your face. There you go, right? So in his letter to the Corinthians, right, uh, Paul declares what love is. And you heard that list, an incredible list of qualities, standards, and the characteristics of love. See, this is what love looks like, says Paul. 
So there's not some, something that's abstract. It's not just something that, you know, makes your, your, the butterflies in your tummy. And I'm sure you've had those. I know Chris had that this morning, right? Because he was going, <laughs> oh, I'm so nervous. So was, <laughs> Told you, didn't you? <laughs> right? It's not just that. But it is, it, is, it is a commitment to acting always for the best of the person. You see, allow your marriage and allow your, your characters to develop love as a mindset. It has to be your mindset. It must be a constant attitude. It's not just the occasional act. Because you see, kindness is love in action. It is. That's what it is. Kindness is love in action. And love is always sacrificial. Always. It's not about me. It's about you. It's not about you, Chris. It's about Emma. Emma, it's not about you. It's about Chris. Right? Sacrificial, right? And when we consider the kindness of Jesus Christ, we, those of you who go to Mass, and if you've not been for a while, why not? Just <laughs> dropping that one in there, right? So those of us who go to Mass and we partake in the Eucharist, what you have there is the kindness of Christ, and it's sacrificial. He gave everything for you. You need to give everything for Emma. Emma, give everything for Christ. That's what kindness is. Take me out, take me out of the cold. Take me out, take me out of the dark. When the rain is blowing in your face and the whole world is on your case I could offer you a warm embrace to make you feel my love when the evening shadows and the stars appear and there is no one there to dry your tears I could hold you for a million years To make you feel my love I know you haven't made your mind up yet But I would never do you From the moment that we met No doubt in my mind where you belong When the rain is blowing in your face And the whole world is on your case I could offer you a warm embrace to make you feel my love When the evening shadows and the stars appear And there is no one there to dry your tears I could hold you for a million years To make you feel my love Now we come to the part of our service where these two young people commit themselves together uh, to one another. And we now hear and we bear witness as Chris and Emma publicly declare their commitment one to the other in the form of the vows. And after which, of course, there will be an exchange of ring so could we get emma oh you're wearing it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a good move <laughs> that's a nice nice touch yes nice touch so 
Could that be, yes, be placed? Well, let's, let's hold on that. So, Chris, you're about to declare your love for Emma. So would you please just repeat after me the following uh, vow? I, Chris McManus. I, Chris McManus. Take you, Emma Vesey. Take you, Emma Vesey. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be kind. I promise to be kind. Patient. Patient. And forgiving. And forgiving. I promise to hold you from this day. I promise to hold you from this day. In my heart. In my heart. Mind. Mind. And soul. And soul. And take care of you. And take care of you. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. To be your faithful partner in life. To be your faithful partner in life. And live with gratitude for you daily. And live with gratitude for you daily. Now, have you got the ring? Could you slide it nicely onto her with your finger? I, Emma Vesey. I, Emma Vesey. Take you, Chris McManus. Take you, Chris McManus. To be my husband. To be my husband. Nice. <laughs> I promise to be kind. I promise to be kind. Patient. Patient. And forgiving. And forgiving. I promise to hold you from this day. I promise to hold you from this day. In my heart. In my heart. Mind and soul. Mind and soul. And take care of you for the rest of my life. And take care of you for the rest of my life. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. To be faithful, your, to be your faithful partner. To be your faithful partner. In life. In life. And live with gratitude. And live with gratitude. For you daily. For you daily. You can slide the ring onto his finger. In the company of your friends and family, I pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> 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 and you may now and you may now kiss Heads held in a crowded room A getaway car Sunday afternoon Cloud of nine The roots run deep It's how it's always gonna be
I'm Alan and I'm Emma's dad. On behalf of Jim and Marie and Alice and I, thank you for coming along here today and joining in this celebration and my goodness, after the last few years, I think it's what we all needed. Emma came down the aisle to the Beatles, Here Comes the Sun, and the lyrics say, the smiles returning to the faces, little darling, it seems like years since we've been here. Here comes the sun and I say it's all right. And you know what? Today it is. It's been a spectacular day. On the 7th September 1990, at lunchtime, Emma came into this world and changed my world forever. She was absolutely beautiful. And she still is, in my non-biased Campbell opinion, non-biased, she still is. Emma doesn't like a lot of attention, and that's a bit difficult to imagine today when she's dressed in a lovely, full-flowing, white, sparkly dress. But today's special, just like her. Emma is not the tallest in the world, but her grandma said, and she was five foot and half an inch at her peak, apparently, Douglas, was that right? Uh, uh, apparently. Uh, you get good stuff in wee bulk, but my goodness, Emma proves that to be true. Emma loves her family, and I would suggest that as one of the key things about her. And I know it means a lot for Emma, for you all to be here today and celebrate this important day for her. And for Alice and I, it's lovely to be here to share with Emma's new family and get to meet you all, because we've heard so much about you from Emma and Chris. Now we get to the dad bit. Emma has had a few family names. We Emma, Em, Emma Pie, Tootsie, Princess, but my favourite was the one she earned as a toddler, which was Cheeky Monkey. There was, someone asked her, her name under the age of four, there was a 50-50 chance she would say, my name's Cheeky Monkey, because she was called it that often. But it just not, it's not just me that knows Emma as a very special person, it's everyone here today. And of course her family, her friends, and Chris, Jim and Marie. But I thought it'd be best to share with Emma's new family what she was like growing up. And I'm looking uh, to do the dad sort of thing and share some family photos. So Craig and I are going to share some family photos. So the first photo was taken the day Emma was born. Lovely. Moustaches were in. Right, I'm here. Right. Second photograph, Emma was always a very affectionate and protective wee girl, but she likes to feel secure. And in this photo, she shows how she combined those feelings beautifully by going to sleep with her teddy and a gun. Why, girl? Why, girl? Chris, don't turn your back on me. <laughs> okay, right. So, she, she learned her baking skills from her grandma and was frequently found in, in the kitchen perfecting her technique. And she also learned her hairdressing skills from washing her grand's hair once a week where she applied a huge amount of mousse to her hair, the things grandparents do for their kids. Now, the next photograph. Emma's best friend is Emily. Emily's here today. Emily. And when they were taught, they were inseparable. They went through the Garahoe playgroup and then school together, spending most lunch time with Emily's grand and Emily's mum, Amy, who spoiled them in water. Emma and Emily exceeded at dancing and became a Garahoe sensation. As you can see today, they still enjoy dressing up. Aileen, do you remember that autumn of what? Right, so that's... Now, I thought it was important that that's the two bridesmaids sewn in costumes, and I didn't want to disappoint the other two bridesmaids. So here we have a photograph, a very family photograph, of Florida with the other bridesmaids dressed up in their outfits. So there we go with that one. Now... <laughs> These, these are available for sale. <laughs> In 2009, Emma lost her heart, her first true love. Absolutely head over heels. She fell in love with Chandler. <laughs> Look at the two of them. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So, that was Chandler came into her life and that was it. But we rolled on a few years, and Emma tells us that she's met a boy called Chris. Now, the way Emma told us about the first day and Chris, we knew it was something different. 
and as they started going out, out, or steady, I don't know what the terms are these days, we could tell it was a Chandler moment for the Emma. Now, critically for Chris, and the only reason we're all here today is that Chandler loves Chris, <laughs> and Chris loves Chandler, and therefore Emma had found her special person in Chris. So that's the official uh, engagement <laughs> for today. So that, that's the embarrassing bit over it. That's it. Done. Right, I, I wasn't too bad. Consider what they are. They were so bad. That was alright. So on the day they moved into their flat, they were finishing up with the flitting, and I asked Chris to stand up. And in front of Emma, I said to him, Chris, this is my wee girl, and I love her with all my heart. And when I walk out that door, I'm trusting you to look after her. Will you promise me that you look after her, support her, and protect her, putting her first in your life? Chris, without making eye contact or any hesitation, said he would. We shook hands and in a big hug. Emma thought this was hilarious. She was egging Chris on all the time. Until the next bit, and I said, up in your feet, Tootsie. <laughs> this is Chris, this is Jim and Marie's wee boy, and they love him. And I asked her the same questions, and she said she would love and look after him as well. About a year later, Emma and Chris moved in for us with us for one year, three months, two weeks, six days, and 14 hours. <laughs> Not only that, after five weeks, the pandemic started. Chris was working from home, and Emma started working with preschool children in Hamilton. They saved up, bought a house, moved out, and changed jobs. Really exciting times, really exciting times. But during that time, we shared the family home. We got to know Chris really, really well. And also we got to see how they love life together, because they do. They are really good together and good for each other, and we could hear them laughing away most nights, every night, and it was lovely and reassuring for Alice and I to hear that. So I'm standing here today as a really proud dad, and my daughter Emma, who changed my life on the 7th of September 1990, is now married. And I ask anyone, if I was to ask anyone to look after her and love her, and take her care of her, it would be Chris. He's a genuinely nice guy, and he fits so well with our family. Whilst that seems a few short words to say about Chris, it speaks volumes of character he is, and Jim and Marie, and his grandparents, you must be really proud of him, because he is a great guy, and they're wonderful together. So ladies and gentlemen, the pain is now over for me. Uh, so late, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to charge your glasses as we wish this new amazing couple Every wealth, health, and happiness in a future life together. Ladies and gentlemen, the bride and groom. I've been told I have to keep this towards my chin, but I don't really have one. That's why I have a beard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, good afternoon everyone, you should know me, I'm Chris, I'm the groom, and if you don't, then how on earth did you get in the guest list? <laughs> but half of my uh, wife and I, I'd like to, oh sorry, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I'd like to thank you all for coming here to celebrate with us today. I know some of you travel far, and it just goes to show what some people do for a free meal. <laughs> I'd like to say a massive thank you to the father of the bride, my now father-in-law, Alan, for those kind words, and might I say, what a speech. So, to Alan. <laughs> thank you to both Alison and Alan for welcoming me into the family. Not just today, but from the moment we met four years ago. I don't know who was more nervous that day. Me, Emma, but luckily we all had it off. And I felt like part of the family ever since. Thank you Chandler for that. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Thank you Chandler, Alison, Alan, Craig, for welcoming me into the family and for helping pull off the wedding of the year. Yeah. 
Whilst I'm thanking parents, I'd also like to thank my own. Uh, Jim and Marie, you should all know them. <laughs> thank you for all this support over the years from America, golf tournaments and everything in between. You've always encouraged me never to settle for less uh, and to be, you know, whether that be in professional or personal life. As you know, my dad is a man of few words. So when he told me one day I've got a diamond there, Emma, I knew I had to step up a notch and here we are. <laughs> Clark, Gus, Nick and the best man, Chris. Each of you have played a very important part in my life. You know, I don't need to, to explain why, you all know how. And I felt like I was standing up there today with my brothers, so thank you for that. <laughs> Emma and I would also like to, to thank the bridesmaids. Thank you for organising a fantastic kendo and for, for keeping Emma calm today. I have no idea how you did it, but I'll probably be asking for tips. <laughs> I'm sure all agree, you all agree, you all look beautiful today, second only to my beautiful bride. Would everyone join me in raising a glass to the bridesmaids, to Emily, Kirsty, and Katrina. Cheers. And to our beautiful flower girl, Poppy, and our handsome page boy, Joey. Give them a round of applause. And we also can't forget our canine friends, Chandler and Buddy. They've looked so smart today. We'd also like to, to extend a special thank you to Isaac. You know, as you all know, I don't need to say, weddings are really special events and, you know, it doesn't get much better than this. But to have someone up there who's essentially extended family made that day even more special for us. So, so thank you, Isaac. Now, we're getting there. <laughs> it wouldn't be much of a speech if I didn't thank my beautiful bride. Emma, what can I say? I didn't think you could look any more incredible, but yet again, you proved me wrong. You simply took my breath away today, and I feel like the luckiest man in the world. Don't cry. <laughs> Not many people know this, but Emma and I actually met on Tinder. I tend to keep this very quiet. <laughs> so for the, the senior audience in the room, Tinder isn't exactly where you go to meet your wife, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but we both, we both lucked out. I remember our first day at the mini grill in Glasgow. I waited anxiously for, for Emma to arrive. She did, we didn't stop talking. I ate off her plate and the rest is history. <laughs> It was, only, it was only after this day that Emma told me that she actually kept the meter and the taxi running, just in case she didn't like the look of me. <laughs> I wouldn't say there's, there's one specific moment when I knew I had to marry you. There's been so many things from your smile, your caring attitude, your drive, your ambition, and the love that you've shown me since the day we, we met, and here we are. I can't wait to, to spend the rest of our lives together and I feel as lucky as I do today, every, every single day. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you could stand, grab a glass, please join me in raising a glass to my beautiful, funny, caring, amazing wife, to Emma. Hey. Hey. Cheers. Hey. Cheers. Now, I'll hand you over to the best man. Good luck. <laughs> For those that don't know me, I'm Chris and I'm the best man. Um, first of all, for a start, I would like to thank the parents, so Jim and Marie, Alan and Alison. Without them today, it wouldn't be possible. And uh, Emma and her mum have done an amazing job organising the hall. And uh, I think you'll agree, the cow shed looks stunning. Because I know, I know how long they've been waiting to, to have this big day. So um, I'd just like to thank them for the place that looks stunning. So, me and Chris, me and Chris go way back. We go back about 26 years ago 
We met in primary one at St Andrews Primary School. Um, listen, I'm going to go right into it. I'm a wee bit nervous today, right? Don't know if you can tell, but I'm not as nervous as Chris was when he asked me to be his best man. So Chris, with his old job, was going to China on the Monday. He phoned me on the Sunday and he said, I'm going to pop over and see you, mate. And me being the you new, know, quiet, not confident guy, I said to my missus, I said, I think Chris is going to ask me to be his best man. She said, ugh, whatever. <laughs> so Chris comes over. It was a Sunday night, as I said. We were probably watching the American football. So the NFL's on. I'm kind of sitting there waiting with my acceptance speech ready. <laughs> you know, think, think what I'm going to say, you know. Be an honour, mate, of course. You know, doing for you and all that. Chris just sat on the couch and said absolutely nothing. So he just sat there for two or three hours, not said a word. So obviously my head's gone. I'm sitting thinking, fuck, I'm not going to get an invite here. I'm, like, maybe with COVID and the numbers and stuff like that. Maybe family only. Again, Chris not said a word to me. He goes, right, mate, I'm away. And I was like, all right, OK, mate. He then walks to the door, so opens the door for him. He walked out the door and he kind of turned back and he went, right mate, uh, best man, aye, is that it sorted? Right, cheers. <laughs> to be honest, he didn't really give me a choice. But, um, I was like, aye mate, enjoy China. Um, but, um, seriously, on a serious note, it's a huge honour to be Chris's best man today. Uh, it means the world to me. They asked me to be his best man. I know there's plenty of guys he, he could ask. He's a popular guy. And uh, the fact that he's asked me, it means the world to me. As I say, we grew up together all through primary school, all through secondary school at Bearsden Academy, playing football together, um, the same team, Lennox Youth, same uh, school teams as well, also playing golf together. And I'm uh, very grateful for Chris because he got me into golf, even though I'm pish, but... <laughs> like, uh, sorry. Uh, I enjoy it even though I'm pish, but um, I've got great memories growing up playing late nights in the summer, also playing courses up here in St Andrews and even in Florida. Uh, one thing I admire about Chris, I've never ever told him this, at the age of 15 he quit football to play golf full time and I admire him for that because it takes big balls to make a decision like that, especially when he's a, he was a really good footballer and I'm not just saying that. Um, to be honest at the time I thought there was something wrong with him because <laughs> West of Scotland, young boys, all, all they care about is football. And I'm not too sure Jim was too happy either, but I don't know what that family discussion was. Uh, fair play to Chris, it was the right decision he made. Um, he was the youngest club champion at Douglas Park at the, at the age of eight, uh, 17, sorry. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Uh, and it eventually led to him getting a golf scholarship, uh, scholarship in America, sorry. I would also like to thank Jim and Marie. Uh, growing up, they treated me like one of their own and I was, in, I was in their house more than I was my own house. They even took me to Florida, because my dad's scared of flying, so. <laughs> you might not know my dad, but it's the only thing he's scared of, is like flying, but like, anything else is fair game, so. He doesn't want to go to Florida. I had Jim and Marie were good enough to take me. Just for the record as well, Chris didn't go on any of the roller, co the roller coasters. Um, didn't want to swear, but he's a bit of a shite bag, so. <laughs> Obviously, me and Jim went on them because we are fucking mental, do you know what I mean? And uh, I still had the photo somewhere, I couldn't find it, Jim, but I had the photo of me and Jim on the Tower of Terror. And uh, we looked like a couple of gangsters, do you know what I mean? So, uh, all Chris wanted to do was play golf. Typical of him. Like, um, I've never met anybody who loves golf so much. Like, even when I asked about Emma, when they first met five years ago, all they talked about was golf. So he kind of said, oh, I've met Emma and I've met a girl and I really like her and all that. And then he just started talking about St Andrews. And, you know, it's the home, uh, home of golf, mate. And I was like, aye, I know that. He was like, eh, aye, Alan's a member of Creel, mate. Do you know that? And I was like, nah, I don't know Alan. And uh, he's like, ah, you know, you get two courses, one practice range. It's £510 a year. Can you believe that? And I was like, aye, I can believe it, aye. Um, I think you'll agree, Emma looks absolutely stunning today. Um, <clears throat> I'm so happy for Chris and Emma. Um, used to are made for each other. I think he's gone. You have an amazing life together with kids and dog, no pressure, but kids and dogs. And, uh, the two of you will be amazing parents because you're both amazing 
with me and Carly's two sons, and they love it when you come over. Like, not because you're nice people, just because you give them chocolate and things like that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, um, I'd also like to mention the bridesmaids look great as well, and the groomsmen as well. Um, they look very handsome, I must say myself. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, McManus, I love you, mate. You're my best mate in the whole world. Um, if you ever need anything, I'm here for you. I'd like to wish you all the health, wealth and happiness in the world. Uh, ladies and gents, can I ask you all to stand? And I would like to make a toast to the new Mr and Mrs Chris and Emma McManus. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.